good afternoon. In discrete mathematics, we discussed in the last classes in the groups. We started with the groups and algebraic structure, how to form a group and also some particular groups and also we discussed about the subgroups, cyclic groups. Here first we will revise and also we use the, these are the books, discrete mathematical structure with application to computer science by Tremblay and Manoha and topics in algebra by Ian Hurstein, discrete and combinatorial mathematics by Grimaldi and Coleman Robert Busby. We discussed in the last class what is a set and set, set forms a using that together with an operation star and it satisfies the conditions axioms or their groups so axiom that is closure for all a b in g then a dot b is also in g then closure associativity identity element and inverse element present in that set with an operation then we say that it is a group and also we discuss some of the examples related to the group and also we discussed about the binary and n operation, algebraic structure, semi groups, monoids and groups and cyclic groups are discussed in our previous classes. Some examples uh, related to the binary operation and also as well as the tabulated forms we discussed how to form the multiplication table as well as addition table we discussed in our previous classes and also we discussed how to check out the commutativity and associativity properties using the table and also we discussed about the algebraic structure how to form the algebraic structure and and also give in some of the examples related to set of all integers and union and intersection of a set and real numbers addition and as well as multiplication and also multiplication product of a set and combination of addition as well as multiplication sets are also the examples for that and also we check out the identity element how to form the definition of identity element in the set and also we discuss the left and identity right and identity some of the theorems related to the identities also we discussed and also de we define the inverse element inverse element of a set and also we discussed about the left inverse as well as right inverse and also how to find the inverse element in a set and also we discussed about the theorems related to the left and right inverses are also equal and also how to f uh, in a any set or a, in a group the identity element or the inverse elements are unique that property also we discussed in our previous classes and also we discussed about the semi group how to check out the semi group means an algebraic system S star in which the operation star is that is satisfies the associative condition then we say that it is a semi group also semi group as a commutative if it satisfies the commutativity property then we say that it is an abelian semi group and also we discuss the monoid monoid means if semi group contains the identity element then we say that it is a monoid and also we discussed about the sub semi group and sub monoid also we discussed and also group after that group and also some examples related to the groups also we discussed commutative group the set of all integers under addition or commutative group positive real numbers under multiplication are also commutative group the set of complex number without zero under multiplication or commutative group real complex invertible matrices under multiplication or non commutative group and also rotation that things also we discussed after that after a group we discuss the subgroup any group if g is a group with a star star be a binary operation and there is a h is a subset of g then same operation h star is also satisfies the all the conditions of a group then we say that it is a subgroup of G star.
and also we discussed about the abelian group finite group if order the number of elements in a third group is finite number then it is a finite group otherwise it is an infinite group and also we discussed about the identity element of in a group is unique and also we proved that inverse element in a group is also unique and also some other properties of a groups are also discussed i means inverse of inverse of inverse is equal to a and a b the inverse is equal to that is reverse process that is b inverse into a inverse and also we discussed about the left cancellation law as well as right cancellation law and also the unique solution any set having a if an element a x is equal to b has a unique solution that is of the form x is equal to a inverse b and also we discuss some of the examples related to group and commutative group we discussed and if it is abelian we discussed about the properties of a group and also the translation of a plane r square in the direction of the vector a comma b is a function f mapping from r square to r square it is defined by f of x comma y is equal to x plus a comma y plus b the composition of this translation with the translation g in the direction of c comma d is the function f map f and g maps from r square to r square that is a plane it is a denoted by f and g is f of g comma x comma y can be written in this way that is also satisfies the group properties and also the realization and also e identity and c in c2 reflection groups rotations also we discussed cyclic group everything we discussed in the previous classes after that we discussed some of the subgroup subgroup condition and uh, discussion of instead of uh, proving all the properties of a group we can satisfy only if it satisfies the only two condition if it is a uh, satisfies the closure and its inverse property then we say that it is a subgroup and also we this identify the proper and improper subgroups any group is a subgroup of itself is called a improper subgroup otherwise it is a proper subgroup and also we deduce two important theorem related to the subgroup if h is a subgroup of g if and only if for all a comma b in h we have that a star b e belongs to h and a inverse is also belongs to h these two theorems we proved otherwise instead of that theorem we can use h is a subgroup of g if and only if for all a comma b any two elements in h then we can write it as a star b inverse belongs to h then we say that it is a subgroup of g and also related to this we proved some of the corollaries as well as some of the problems deduced in the last class one of the famous example is the fourth root of square root of unity is a subgroup of fourth roots of second square roots of unity is a subgroup of fourth roots of unity under multiplication a non abelian group of order 6 in a permutation group of s3 also we discussed equilateral triangle and also we discussed the order of a element as well as order of a group if g is a finite group the number of elements in g that can be denoted by order of g and also we discuss the properties of a order of a group and also we discuss the cyclic groups a group g is said to be cyclic 
if there exists an element g in g such that every element in g can be expressed as an integral power of g then g is called a generator of g and we write it as it as g that is 1 g g square g cube etc g power n means we given one example in a cyclic group that is square square roots of fourth roots of unity what is fourth roots of unity 1 minus 1 i and minus i are the fourth roots if you take i i power 1 you get i i square is minus 1 if you put i cube is equal to minus i and i to the power of 4 is equal to i squared into i squared is minus minus 1 into minus 1 you get 1 means all the element is generated by i then we say that i is the generator of the fourth roots of unity these things we discussed in a in our previous classes and uh, and also we discuss some of the examples if g is a cyclic group of order n a power k is a generator of g if and only if that is g c d greatest common divisor k of k is to n equals 1 and also the cyclic group order is it is Euler's phi function and also we proved some of the example as well as important theorems related to the cyclic groups are discussed in our previous classes and also we find the order of elements in a group and also we list out the some of the examples now in this class we started with the these are the some basic important things we discussed in our previous class now we are frequently using that things here we started with here coset decomposition let g star be a group and let h be a subgroup for any a belongs to g we have a into h here sometimes instead of a h we can use here operation star a star h that is a in the left we say that it is the elements is of the form a star h h is in h is known as the left coset of h similarly right coset can be defined as h a that is equal to h star of a such that h is in h it is a right coset of h we note that some of the properties related to coset the left and right cosets of h are the subsets of g if g is abelian group then left coset is equal to the right coset if a belongs to a h definitely it is also belongs to h a means left as well as right coset if h is a finite subgroup then order of h is equal to order of a h and order of h a the left and right cosets of h are not one and the same in general some of the results related to the cosets any two left cosets are either disjoint or equal suppose you can take a h and b h are the here we take a two left cosets a h and b h are the two left cosets of h suppose a h and b h are not disjoint if it is not disjoint means definitely there is a one element let c be an element in both then so c can be written as a into h 1 and c can be also written as, as a into h b times h 2 h 1 inverse into h because it is there then you can substitute here h1 inverse you can use the associativity condition here then that become h2 h1 inverse into h then h1 this belongs to this is b times because h2 h1 and h are all belongs to in a h 
Thus, for any x belongs to a h, we get x belongs to b h. Here, we started with x belongs to a h, we get it that x belongs to b h, means these two are one and the same, means so that a h is equal to b h. Now, we have one of the important thing to remember, let g dot be a group with subgroup h. For any two elements a comma b in g, we say that a is congruent to b modulo h and we can write it as a is congruent to b mod h if and only if a into b inverse belongs to h. Because we know that h is already a subgroup here means a into b inverse because you get 0 here 1 a into b inverse belongs to h. There is a one proposition related to this. The relation A is congruent to B mod H is an equivalence relation on G. The equivalence classes containing A can be written in the form of H A equals H bar H into A because it is a right cosect H A that is H A such that H belongs to H and it is called a right coset of H in G. The element A is called the representative of the coset H A. Now, we give some examples related to the right and left cosets. In A 3, the find the right cosets of A 3 in S 3 that is permutation group. One of the cosets is the subgroup itself that is A 3, A 3 containing 1, 1 means here it is a permutation group 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, here 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3 and 3, 2, 3 means here, here A 3 equals the set containing here 1, 2, 3, 3 elements will be there that is 1, 2, 3 and another one is 1, 2, 3 means 1, 2, 2. 2 to 3, 3 to 1 and another one is here 1, 2, 3 means 1 to 1 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 2. This is a set A 3. If you take this element that is same as this A 3, take any element not in the subgroup say 1 and 2. 1 and 2 means here, if you take here 1, 2, 3, 1 to 2, 1 and 3. This is 1, 2 element. If you take this element and take another set A 3 of 1, 2, if you take and multiply here, you get it here 1, 2, 2 and 1, 3 and 2, 3. If you the composition, you get this. Since the right cosets forms a partition of S 3, instead of this here 1, 2, 1, 3 and 2, 3 and the two cosets the above contains all the elements of S 3. It follows that these are the only two cosets, this one and that one are the two cosets. If you take a union, we get the S 3, that is A 3, A 3 of 1, 2, 3, A 3 of 1, 3, 2. A 3 of 1, 2 is same as A 3 of 1, 3, that is same as A 3 into 2, 3. And uh, another example, find the right cosets of H. H is containing E, G4, G8 in C12, the rotation E, G, G square, etc., G to the power of 11. Here, H is itself, this is a coset. Another is H into G. If you multiply G here, if you apply here right coset, H into G, identity into G, you get G g power 5, g power 9 will get. These two cosets have not exhausted all the elements of C 12. These two cosets does not get all the elements. So, pick an element, another one, say, because here g, g power 5 and g power 9. Similarly, you can take another element that is g square. If you take g square, First here h is equal to e g and g square is there, sorry, 
g power 4 and g power 8. This is 3 elements, sweet 12 containing 12 elements. First, if you take h into g, because here they are telling that right quotient, g is in right. Then if you multiply identity into g, you get g, g power 5 and g power 9. Similarly, using these two, we cannot get the c 12. Then again, if you take another element in in C 12, multiply with G, then H, then that becomes G, G square, G to the power of 6 and G to the power of 10. Again, if you observe that, here only we get 3, G, G for 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, but here G, another 3 element is missing here, G 3 is missing. Then if you take H, G 3, you get it here g cube and g to the power of 5 and g to the power of 11. Means, if you observe that, if you take a 3 quasite instead of 1 quasite, here if you take 4 quasites, if you take a union of all these, you get a C 12. These are the 4 quasites, right quasites containing in that. These two quotients have not exhausted means we take another one that is G2. Similarly, we take third quotient and similarly fourth. Finally, the if you take a union of this, C12 can be represented as H union of HG, union of H to the square and HG power Q. These are all the quotients. This is one of the examples. Next, we can define the index of a subgroup. If H is a subgroup of a finite order, finite group G, then the number of distinct left or right quotients of H in G is called the index of H in G. That can be denoted by G is to H. We gave you some examples related to this. For a group G, Z12 plus and the subgroups H is equal to 0, 4, 8 of G, find all the left quotients of H in G. Also obtain the corresponding quotient decomposition of G, means exactly similar processor procedure we adopted here in the previous example. Here we can do it here instead of E G G to the power of 4, here 0, 4, here H containing 0 and 4 and 8. Means here also you get what happens here. First you can start with any one of the elements. If the if you take H 1 because it is Z 12 under addition. Under addition means addition property multiplication. First, I will take 1 plus h. What is that left uh, left quotient? 1 is in the left. 1 plus h, then this become 1. This is 5, then 9. Similarly, this not generated whole set. Then you can take another element. 2 plus h, then that become 2, 6 and 10. Again, we are not getting the complete set. Then again take another element 3 plus H that become 3, 7 and 11. Here if you observe that if you these 3, these 4 H, 1 plus H, 2 plus H and 3 plus H. If you take a union of this you get Z12 that is 0, 1 etcetera up to 11 because it is Z12. Z12 means totally 12 elements are there. Then we say that whole set H, 1 plus H, 2 plus H and 3 plus H. This is known as the index of H, total number 1, 2, 3, 4. That is known as the index of H in G. That is if you take G can be written as Z12 under addition is equal to 0 plus H. 1 plus H, 
2 plus h and 3 plus h, we get the desired result. Next, similarly, there are some of the examples related to right quasit and left quasites. You can find here h is equal to containing 0 and 3 in z 6 under addition. Similarly, right quasites means you can take the element here h is equal to 0 and 3 will be there. This is under addition. Addition means you can find the right quasit h plus 1, then h plus 2 and h plus 3. If you take h plus 1, h plus 2 and h plus 3, this set become what happens here 1 and this become 4 and here this become 2 and 5. Because these three sets we get a this is the find the right cosets means and also index is equal to 3. Similarly, another example if h is equal to 1, 3, 9 under multiplication, you can see the operation here. The operation is multiplication means you can multiply here, means h equals 1. 3 and 9. The group is that is g 13 sorry z 13 integers under 13 under multiplication set. Here if you take here 1 is there 1 you get 1. If you take 2 right quasite means h into 2. And what happens here this become 2 and 2 into 3 is 6 and 2 into 9 is 18. 18 means it is a modulo 13. Modulo 13 means 13 into 18 means you get 5 here. Next similarly h into 3 you can find then h into 4. So, you get the desired solution 3 3 3 you get the union we get the right cosets. Find all the left cosets of the subgroup 1 comma minus 1 in the fourth roots of unity. Hence, obtain the coset decomposition of fourth roots of unity under multiplication. If you take h is equal to this and you can take a fourth roots of unity, take one element i, i square, then you get the desired solution. Fourth roots of unity is What is fourth roots of unity? 1 minus 1 i and minus i is the g and square roots of unity that is 1 and minus 1. If you find the left cosets, here left coset means you can take i into h and a multiplication you get i into minus i. Means here only two sets will be that you get the complete g can be reduced means h union i into h or minus i into h any one of them. Next there is a one important theorem related to the cosite that is Lagrange's theorem. As the example above suggests that every quasi contains the same number of elements. We use this result to prove the famous theorem of Joseph Lagrange that is proved in 17th to 18th century. That is first we prove one of the important theorem uh, lemma related to bisection, bijection that is 1, 1 and on 2. There is a bijection between any two quasites in of h in g. Let h a be a right coset of h in g. We produce a bijection means 1 1 and on to function between h a and h from which it follows that there is a bijection between two cosets. 
we can define a functions phi psi h to h a by psi of h is equal to h of a because in terms of the right cosine h into a then psi is clearly surjective surjective means onto function then because you can see you get a pre image now suppose that if psi of h1 is equal to psi of h2 means now we can prove that onto function is over because we get a pre image now we can prove that we have a one one function if we take phi of h1 equals phi of h2 we prove that h1 is equal to h2 here phi of h1 means that is h1 times a and phi of h2 means h2 of a then if you say that here that is psi of h1 equals psi of h2 means here phi psi of h1 is defined as h1 of a equals here h2 of a here we know that it is already a group and also h is a subgroup means definitely it satisfies the cancellation law cancellation law also holds good you can apply cancellation law for right hand then you get h1 and h2 otherwise we can use a belongs to h means definitely a is or a subgroup means a inverse is also belongs to that then h1 times a into a inverse we can multiply to right hand side then that is h2 times a into a inverse then a into a inverse become identity then you get h1 here again h2 h2 into e identity times element you get h1 is equal to h2 means we prove that it is a one one function if it is a one one and on two means there is a bijection now we prove important theorem is lagrange's theorem the theorem th tells that if g is a finite group h is a subgroup of g then order of h divides the order of g how to prove this first we can start with the the cosets right cosets the right cosets of h in g forms a partition of g so g can be written as a disjoint union we already proved one of the problems related to cosset decomposition you observed that whole set can be deduced using cosets right cosets or left cosets here we started with the right cosets that is g is equal to h of a1 union h of a2 union of h of a k for a finite set of elements then a1 a2 etc a n are all belongs to g then by the previous lemma we already proved that there is a bijection between the two cosets the number of elements in each coset is order of h hence counting all the number in the disjoint union if you count it here if it is k times will be there 1 2 3 etc k times we see that order of g equals k times the order of h therefore what happens here k is equal to that is g by h therefore order of h divides the order of g means if you take a fourth roots of unity it is a group and square of root of unity is a subgroup then you get four elements in a g but order of h is equal to 2 then 4 divided by 2 it divides if h is a subgroup of g the number of distinct right cosets of h in g is called the index of h in g that we already discussed and also sum up the direct following is the direct comp 
consequence of the proof of the Lagrangian's theorem. If G is a finite group with a subgroup H, then order of G is to H is equal to order of G divided by order of H. And also, if A is an element of a finite group G, then order of A divides the order of G. Similarly, an element generates the in a cyclic group, it is also divides. We give one example related to this. Let G be a group with subgroups H and K. If mod order of G is equal to 660, order of K is equal to 66 and K is contained in H, H is contained in G, what are the possible values of H? By Lagrange's theorem means what happens here? Order of H must divide order of G. Again here, order of G is equal to 660, order of K is equal to 66, must divides order of H here, because it is a subset. Therefore, 660 can be written as op order of H times some P. For some integer P, greater than 1. Similarly, order of H is equal to 66 times Q for some integer Q greater than 1. Hence, 660 can be this order of H can be written as 66 into P Q. Here, 660 equals 66 times P into Q means here this is 10 times means P Q is equal to 10 when it become 10 if p is equal to 2 or q is equal to 5, that is one of the thing. Otherwise, p is equal to 5 because p is and q are both are greater than 1. Q p is equal to 5 or q is equal to 2. These are the two possibilities that if divides, that is p into q must be 10. Means, order of h must be equal to 66 into 5, that is 330 our order of H is equal to 66 into 2 that is 132. These are the two possible values of H. Now, there is a important theorem, there is a homomorphism, there is some definition related to homomorphism of a group and also isomorphism we discussed now. If G dot, G dot and H star be two groups, the function mapping from F from G to H is called a group homomorphism if it satisfies F of A dot B, this first element equals H F of A star, this operator. Because it is mapping from G to H, then that goes to f of a star f of b for all a comma b belongs to g then we say that it is homomorphism this function is a group homomorphism we often use the notation f mapping from g to g dot to h star for such homomorphism sometimes some of the authors are also used instead of homomorphism morphism And also, a, another important thing is isomorphism. A group is an isomorphism, is a bijective group homomorphism, means it satisfies 1, 1 on 2 and also homomorphism, then we say that it is a isomorphism. 1, 1, first it is a homomorphism, then it is, it satisfies 1, 1 and on 2, then we say that it is isomorphism. There is a isomorphism between two groups, we say that G dot and H dot, H star are isomorphic, we write it as, this is a symbol of isomorphism. Some of the examples related to homomorphism and isomorphism. The function f is a mapping from integers to integer n, defined by f of x equals, here 
is a group homomorphism. Let R be a group of real numbers with operation addition and let R plus means positive real numbers is be a group of all positive real numbers with operation multiplication. The function mapping from f mapping from real to re positive real number defined by f of x equals e power x is a homomorphism. For all x y belongs to R, if you take two elements from a real number, then here the operation is multiple addition f of x plus y equals if you take my addition here x plus y this is r is under addition r plus is under multiplication you must remember means here actually this is a mapping from r plus to r plus multiplication this is the operation here the function is defined as f of x is equal to e power x is a homomorphism. First here if you take any two elements means it is under addition means you can take two elements means it is f of x plus y. If you take x plus y is in r plus then this become e power of x plus y. e power of x plus y means it, it can be rewritten as e power x into e power y e power x means that is f of x into this is f of y. You can see here addition converting into multiplication. This is homomorphism. Similarly, if you take now if it is an f is an isomorphism for its inverse of g r plus to r means reverse r plus to r is what happens here? It is e power x become log x. If you take that is equal to t means what happens log x is equal to log t that is ln of x. Therefore, the additive group r is isomorphic to the multiplication group r plus. Note that the inverse function g is also homomorph isomorphism means if you take here if it is a log x if g means inverse element g r plus to multiplication mapping to r plus here g of x is defined as ln of x. If you take two elements because it is under multiplication means if you take two elements g of x comma y that is ln of x y then this become you know that logarithmic function of two elements simplified as ln of x plus ln of y means this is f of x plus g of y sorry f of y means again multiplication become this means it having a bijective function 1 1 and as well as onto function therefore it is a note that inverse function of g is a isomorphism. There are some examples related to this. Let R be a group of all real numbers with operation addition. R plus is a group of all positive real number. The similar example instead of e power x here 2 power x is there. This is also homomorphism. Some theorems related to homomorphism. Let f mapping from g to h be a group homomorphism and let e of g and e of h be the identities of g and h respectively then f of e of g is same as e of h and f of a inverse is can be written as f of a the whole inverse for all a in g. Since f is a homomorphism f is a home it is given that it is a homomorphism f is a homomorphism means f of e of g into f of e of g can be written as f of e of g into e of g f of e of g into e of g can be written as both identities one and the same therefore f of e of g 
then f of e of g can be written as f of e of g that is same as e of h means here if you cancel the the you can multiply here e of g because identity then here you can apply left cancellation law you get e of h is equal to f of e of g then another one if f of a into f of a inverse means you know that it is an identity then f of a into f of a inverse again it is homomorphism then that can be written as f of a into a inverse a into a inverse means it is an identity f of e of g f of e of g means from 1 that can be written as e of h hence f of a inverse is the unique inverse of f of a that is can be written as f of a inverse is equal to f of a the whole inverse Next, there is another important uh, fun subgroup that is normal subgroup. A subgroup H of a group G is called a normal subgroup of G if G inverse uh, into H into G belongs to H for all G in G, small g is in G and H small h is in H. Then we say that this if this property holds then we say that that subgroup is a normal subgroup. We have some theorems or proposition related to this if H g is equal to g h means H g into g h means it is right quasite is same as is equal to left quasite for all g in g if and only if H is a normal subgroup. Suppose that h is equal to g h left coset is equal to right coset then any element h in h h in h into g belongs to capital h into g that is same as g into h hence this element is same as g times h1 for some h1 is in h and g inverse of h into g because it is a normal subgroup g inverse into h g can be written as g inverse g inverse h or h into g can be replaced here because h g is equal to g h then g inverse into g into h 1. Here g inverse into g is an identity element then e into h 1 then e into h 1 means that is h 1 only then that element belongs to h therefore h is a normal subgroup. Conversely, if H is a normal, let H G in H H G and G inverse H G is equal to some H 1 belongs to H, then H G can be written as G into H 1. You can transfer that side, that become multiply both the sides left side by G, then G into G inverse is identity H G is equal to G times H 1 that belongs to the g into h and un h g is contained in g h. Similarly, we can show that g into h g inverse is equal to g inverse whole inverse h into g inverse is equal to h 2 this is another element therefore, that belongs to h means since h is a normal g h is equal to h 2 g here h g is equal to g h 1 that belongs to h g g h is contained in h into g therefore, this contained that and that is contained this means so that h g is equal to g h means here if this property left quasite is equal to right quasite for all g in g if and only if h is a normal subgroup of g is one of the important theorem. Now, we can define the kernel of the kernel of an homomorphism. If f is a mapping from g to h is a group homomorphism, the kernel of f 
is denoted by curve F is denoted and defined to be the set of elements of G that are mapped by F to the identity of H that is kernel of F is equal to set of all G belongs to G F of G is equal to E into H. Then using this we deduce some of the propositions. Let F is a mapping from G to H be a group homomorphism morphism. Then kernel of F is a normal subgroup of G and F is a injective means one one function if and only if kernel of F must be equal to identity element in G because identity element and G and H are one and the same. And another proposition for any group homomorphism F is a mapping from G to H the image of F that is image of F is equal to set of all F of G such that G belongs to G is a subgroup of H. But we must remember it not necessarily a normal subgroup. These are the important things for homomorphism. 